we got a vacation for you. Westworld is a 1973 ambitious sci-fi movie from MGM, written and directed by Michael Crichton. The story is set in the near future of 1983, where we follow the two friends Peter and John on their travel to the popular and expensive amusement park created by a company called Delos. The park they have created are split into three parts, Medieval World, Roman World and Westworld, which is where John and Peter are going. All of the worlds are populated by robots that are so real looking that you can't tell the differences between them and other people. Some pretty rough looking customers here. How many of them are... Uh, yes, like us? Who knows? That's the beauty of this place. It doesn't matter. The guests of the amusement park are able to act out all of the fantasies, even if it includes murder and rape. But during their stay at the park, something goes wrong, and now the robots are in fact not under control, but rather acting on instincts, which puts all of the guests in great risk. God damn it! Do you suppose it's real? Hell no! That's not supposed to happen! Maybe it is, maybe it's part of the thing! The hell goddamn machines anyway! That's not supposed to happen! Westworld is a movie that was way ahead of its time and has been highly influential to other popular movies that came on later. I am absolutely fascinated by the premise of such an amusement park being created. It's interesting to see how innocently the people in this film act in this virtual world, as I would expect people to go full Grand Theft Auto if a place like this actually was opened. I'd expect so much mayhem that the government would probably shut that down quite fast, or at least censor it by not allowing sexual content and violence, making it more like a family park instead. If I were to visit a park like this, then I would prefer one where the robots didn't have real guns though. Your move. Uh, I'm shot. What? We see the excitement of visiting the park through the eyes of John and Peter. With John having been there before, and Peter being a newcomer, and acting giddy as a child getting his first Nintendo machine. We also see the behind the scenes stuff of what goes around in maintaining and keeping the park and robots updated. Until shit hits the fan of course. It's also cool to see how the blame of the robots misbehaving is put on what might be the first concept of a computer virus being put in a movie plot. And by blame I mean that it is a theory by the park runners that are talked about briefly as we don't get an exact reason for why this mayhem started. Well, despite our corrections, the breakdown rate continued to climb. Then medieval world began to have trouble. And now we're seeing more western world breakdowns. And there's a clear pattern here which suggests an analogy to an infectious disease process, spreading from one resort area to the next. Although the first two thirds of the film, as seeing the people explore the parks was quite fun. I'm sure you could learn a lot about yourself by doing a visit like this, by seeing just how sinister you would go, or if you would behave and play clean. The final part however, when the robot starts to misbehave, is not as good. While it makes sense to have the machines turn on the people and their creators, it is just not intriguing enough. Although the killer cowboy, these days known as the gunslinger, played excellently by Jules Brunner, is super cool. His performance as this relentless killer is credited as being influential on John Carpenter when he created Michael Myers, and also obviously for the Terminator. In fact, the point of view by the gunslinger is credited as being the very first time a movie took advantage of CGI. The guy who came up with this premise is Michael Crichton, who I guess is mostly known these days for writing the novel and co-writing the screenplay to another amusement park gone wrong called Jurassic Park. The two stories share similarities and it's not a reach to say that we would have never gotten Jurassic Park without Westwell being successful first. I would say that even though he was a very creative person, I can say that he did a great job of directing Westworld. He could have toned down the silliness of it a bit and also explored more how the guests were affected by the visit, as there was a lot more to explore with such a great premise. Now that's just rude. And if we cut down the third part or just made the movie last more than 90 minutes, then there would be plenty of space to do more with it. I can't put all the blame on Crichton though, as working for the studio MGM at the time, 
wasn't the easiest. They had a reputation for being a bit too involved and making the lives of filmmakers tough back then, and Westworld would be nothing different. They demanded script changes all the way up until the first day of shooting, and the contracts with the leading actors wasn't signed until two days before filming started. To be fair though, they did agree to make the film, and ended up putting up $1,250,000 for production, an increase of their initial $1 million that they were originally adamant of not going above. It did pay off big time though, as Westworld would end up making over $7 million during the 70s alone. And adding to that home media sales and rentals over the next 40 years, I'd say MGM should be very happy that they gave this one a green light. Westworld would also give life to a sequel 3 years later with Future World, a movie made without involvement of either Crichton or MGM. It's not a film I can recommend, as it is about a journalist played by Peter Fonda investigating a new version of Delos instead of focusing on the park. There is also a short-lived television show on CBS called Beyond Westworld in 1980, but that only lasted 5 episodes before being cancelled. And of course, last year we got the new highly popular television version of Westworld premiering on HBO. Westworld is a sci-fi classic that I feel should get bigger praise than what it has gotten so far. Hopefully the new television show will make more people take another look at it. While there are some plot holes to be found and some stupid stuff like why the hell the people in the control room didn't have a backup escape plan when the park is powered down, but even so it is still a great film with a unique premise and good actors. Westworld gets a 4 out of 5. Have you seen the movie version of Westworld? And if so, what did you think of it? And how do you feel it ranks up against a new television show? Let me know in the comment section below and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this review. Thank you.